Hi, it's Lee Solden. I try to help you learn some Norwegian. Um, I am teaching you from an audiobook found on YouTube. Nothing I'm associating, nothing that I did or associated with. Um, it's the Norwegian listening practice, the 20 minute version. Um, that's from uh, Norwegian Pod 101. I believe. Um, okay, um, this is the third video in the series. Please listen to the first two. Uh, this one will start on story five at the 447 mark on the video. I kvinna all and man ser pa e bilda. A woman and a man are looking at a photograph. I is a or feminine. Kavina, woman. A is O G, G silent. And N A is for common. Man, man. Ser, look. Ser can be look or see. Pa, at. Pa can be at, on. Others. Besides that, okay. Yeah. It's E key. Key's not pronounced. A builda. It's bill the. Okay, the trailing E is like an uh as in up. It's builda. Okay. And builda is neuter, so it's preceded by E T. Eh, a picture. A photograph. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the verb of say, to see, to look, um, present tense, ser, uh, say is also the command form, saw, is saw matches English in the past tense, um, our set, had seen, and how to set, had seen. Okay, and notice here that ser rhymes with the word air. When you see an er, sometimes it's pronounced r, such as in the word is in their language is er, and that's pronounced r. So you pretty much have to learn on a word by word basis. Um, I think my observation is that if you see an ER in a verb, it's more likely to be a air. Otherwise, it's probably an R. But let's keep going here. Okay, sentence two. 451. Vilke Bilda Ser de Pa. Okay. Vilke, that's spelled with ET on the end, the T is silent. That's which, and this time it's which for a neuter now. Bilda again is neuter, so you gotta put a, a neuter Vilke in front of it. Um, H is silent. On Vilka. Um, so Bilda, Vilka, which, Bilda, picture, ser, look, D, they. Now D can mean besides they. Um, it's also the plural the. Okay. And it also is the plural that. So those. And also D and Pa at which picture look they at Vilka Bilda Ser D Pa. Okay. Okay. 
Sentence three, four fifty four. Detta är a bilda av football laga. Sunnen din är pa. Ikasat. Detta means this. It is the this for neuter. Okay. Denna is the this for common. So detta, this, are, is, a, builder, a, photograph, um, <clears throat> of, of, football laga, football team, sunandine, your son, is on. Our pa. Not true. Ikasat. Okay, we have Dean here. Um, means your. Okay, and it's modifying a common noun, sunan. Sun is son. The en on the end makes it the son. But it doesn't. You don't translate it as the son, because we just we say your son. We don't. Put a the in there. Um, but when you say that it's a specific son, such as your son, it's not just any old son, it's your son. That's a very specific son, so we call that the definite case. And for grammar purposes, the en has to be there. So although you don't translate that en when you translate it to an English sentence, it has to be there for grammar. Okay. Um, and okay. Also, the data here, which this, um, it has to be data in this case. It doesn't matter if what they're referring to, builda, is neuter or not. When you're referring to something forward in the sentence, you have to use neuter, okay? Um, if you're referring to something behind a previous sentence, then you can use, either use de, det, or um, den, depending on matching what's in the previous sentence. Whenever you're looking forward in a sentence, you have to use the neuter. Okay, um, and enough for that sentence. Go on to the next one. Okay, it says, Vem are Sunandin. Okay, so that says, Who, Vem, who are Sunan, the son, but we just say son, din, your, so whom is son, your, okay, and that's at 458, I'll go over the, uh, the to be verb, avara, uh, it's to be, um, are, it's is, or it's going to be is, or are, or am. Okay, I only have, I only have one verb form per tense. So the present tense is are, or, or whether it's you, they, we, it's still are. Sunan, the son, um, din, your, and I got on the wrong line here. Back to to be. <laughs> okay. So, var, that's a command, be good. Vashoku. Okay. For instance, be good, var. And then we have uh, var, is equivalent to was. And if you know German, that's the same word, var, um, for was in German. Um, var, vart, has uh, 
has been Harvard, Harvard had been K. H is silent in vain. H V E M. And again, Din has to match gender. Um, it's, 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 if it was feminine, if you were using feminine, it'd be D is D I D. Um, if this was a neuter, it would be Dit. And if it was any plural, it's Dinna, D I N E. Here we have a singular common noun, Sun, so it's Din. Um, again, the EN is added here for the grammar purposes. Okay. Go to the next sentence. And, okay, I got a note here. Notice, um, hmm. Not going to go there right now. Okay, so let's go to 501 on the video. Guy okay, says, he here, Han Har. Okay, so it's an H E R for here, and again it's R. Um, we would say him here, but actually he here makes more sense, doesn't it? He is the one, right? Why does he only say him here anyway? So, by the way, the word for him is um, oh boy, I'm not gonna say that because I might get it wrong. I believe it's, I don't believe it's Han, but I don't have 100% confidence in something I don't like to say it, so. Okay. Okay. Sentence six is 502. Okay. Uh, Han R. Den Huista. Oh, he is the tallest. So, ah, uh, this is an expression. O. Oh, Han, he, R, is, Den, the Huista. Okay. Um, Huista is a adjective but it's invariable okay when you say when you do the there's superlatives you put an s-t-e at the end and that's it you're done you don't have to put a, uh, anything more any endings on it to match uh common versus neuter okay um okay Sentence seven five oh five. Yep. Han are till all me where and my. Yep, yes, yeah. Han he are is. And they have this phrase till all me. Uh, word by word, it's to and with. Um, but the phrase till all may means even. So, yes, he is even till all may taller than me. Who you're uh, and my. And ENN -N is than and my, me, um, M E G. Okay, my. And it says, I got a note here that uh, he pronounces this in this story, hurrah, and leaves out 
the, the slight middle syllable. But you go to Google, you'll hear Hoyera, Hoyera. So just a little accent difference. Um, next sentence. Actually, that is the end of story five. So. Okay, story five starts on 547. And man, all and Kavina snock here. A man and a woman are talking. Okay, snock here can mean chat, talk, speak with somebody. Um, so I get N is A for common. Man is man. All and oh, the G is silent, the OG. N A. Again for common, Kavina, woman, snocker, are talking. Okay, um, ah, snocker uh, is the verb for to chat. Present tense, snocker, snock for command form, snock it, talk, past tense. Har snock it. Has hot. Hot it snock. Had talk. Okay. Um, this is a group one verb. Um, group one verbs end with ET. That's the main thing. Okay. Then there's the question of well, what about a guide as to when you're going to see, when, when will you see an ET verb? Well, if, as in this case, you see a double, uh, two consonants before the E. Uh, most verbs end, end with E, um, a vast majority. Of, but the ones that end with E can have various endings. And mostly, not over 90%, not probably 95% of the time, if it ends with E, it's going to either have ET for the past tense or TE. So either ET or TE, okay. But it's going to involve adding a T, either putting a T at the very end or putting a T before the E. Okay. So this goes from snaka to snock it. Um, and by the way, you put a T in a verb form, you do pronounce that T. Um, okay. It's going to read what I have here. This group of verbs is defined by the past tense ending in ET. It's called it group one. Generally, the infinitive ends with um, uh, two. Well, okay. I wrote, wrote that wrong. Anyway, yeah, it's going to, this group is going to end with uh, a two consonants and an E. Um, or the uh, letters G, P, or D, uh, and then an E, will also a lot of times mean that it's going to be a, a, an ET ending. Okay? And if they end with TE, that's group two, if end with DE, it's group three, and those will also end with an E, but a little different. I won't go into that right now. And you got group four, DDE verbs. That's DDE. Uh, group four verbs are unique because they do not end with an E on the infinitive. Okay. And from what I from what I can what I can see, more often if you have a verb that does not end with an e, it's more chance that it's irregular than falls into uh, group four. So you won't see a lot of group four. Matter of fact, in this first twenty stories, there's only one group four verb, um, and there are no group three verbs that show up at all. 
ever, so everything is either group one, ET verbs, or group two, PE verbs. Okay. Um, <clears throat> no, if the past tense ends ET, then the past tense form is also the past participle. So here in snaka, um, it was, okay, talked was snock it and has talked is har snock it snock it shows up for both the past participle and the past tense um also we'll mention that if it's a te verb if the if the past tense ends with te then you just drop the e to get to the past participle okay but this here is a this one's a te this is, excuse me, this is an ET verb, stock, stock it, a stock it. You just keep the stock it as the past participle. Next sentence. Okay. We get 550. And that's pronounced by the snock ear, snock ear. Okay, that's like saying the word ear. Okay, snock ear. Okay. Okay, a note on. Uh, um, there's there's two writing systems in Norway. One's one's called uh, Buk Bukmal. It's more common, and they got New Nor New Norse. And it's not said right. New Norse. Okay. Um, the 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 Bukmal is what. I'm concentrating on, okay? And the, don't think of them as two dia different dialects or anything. It's just two writing systems, and there's many different dialects of Norwegian, or maybe not a dialect, but so much as regional differences in how they speak. And one region might tend to use one writing system to match how they speak, okay? So, I'm concentrating on Bukmal, so just note that anything I say is about that, not necessarily about New Norsk. Okay, um, so so Kavina, woman, is treated as a common noun here, which is fine. Okay, you, when speaking Norwegian, can always use the common for this word and any other word that sometimes is treated as, as feminine. Because Norwegian is going toward a two-gender system, just using common, where they're kind of lumping masculine and feminine together, and neuter, uh, which is where Dutch is already at for the most part, I noted. Okay. So, um, that's new Norsk. I said it better that time. Okay. Um, and that I already said. Okay. Go to sentence two, stars at five fifty. Um Nar when Colmer comes uh, or come uh, D they till two Ah, it's an infinitive marker. Say, C, N, A, film, film, film's a common word. Let's say it a little quicker. Nar Homer D till uh, say and film. Um, so Nar is when. Homer, um, come. D they. Till to uh, say to, to see and film a movie. 
how we have home or till awe is one way to make a future comes to then whatever the infinitive is, right? When you use that, it has no baggage. In other words, it just means when are they going to see without the the uh, want nor um, choose in there. If you want to if you want to put the, the, the sentiment of something you're choosing, you scowl. If you want to make a future tense where you're saying you're going to do something and you want to, you use vil. When you use, when you use Comer till ah, you're just saying what's going to happen without any of the above. Another way to say, say something for the future without anything like want or uh, choose to uh, simply use the present tense, like just like in English, we we say a present tense and put a uh, future reference in it, it becomes a future tense, right? And your region can do the same thing. Um, and you don't have to have a future reference if, for instance, you're talking about tomorrow. Then you can your your future tense sentences can be present tense, right? Because you already you, everybody knows you're talking about tomorrow, okay? Okay. Um, and next sentence. Be at 5.53. And... Says, Skal Vigal, I'll say and film Nesta Lurdag. Okay, Lurdag, sorry. Uh, my Dutch accent kicked in there on the G. It's Lurdag. Um, okay, Skal go. Shall we go and see a film next Saturday? Again, this is using scholarly. So it's like, should we choose to go? Okay. Um, Skal shall the we go go all and silent G O G say C N A film movie film Nesta next. Lurdog Saturday. Okay. Now we have the skal modal verb, and it's kind of distributed between two verbs ahead of it, ga, go, and say, see. So neither one of those need the ah for an infinitive marker because they've been preceded by a modal verb. Now, ga is go, but it can be non-literal, okay? So the phrase go or say actually means go see, with the go part of it not being literal. Like, okay, I'm going to go do the dishes, okay? Um, that doesn't mean I'm going anywhere. <laughs> it means I'm... So... I'm just going to go do the dishes. I'm going to do the dishes. I can leave the go out. Okay. Now, the very same phrase, if they said dra os say, that would infer that they're doing more than just, just going to do something. They're going to actually leave where they are, go a considerable distance where you probably have to drive or maybe even take a plane. <laughs> okay. So we draw, draw. But this ga here can be either uh, for in walking distance or non-literal, such as in this phrase here, okay? Um, now, if you look in the Google, if you put in draw, uh, uh, say, it's still gonna say, it's still gonna come up, uh, go and see. But you just have to understand there's a difference, okay? Um, 
cover that set as well enough. Move on to the next one. Okay, and that's going to be five fifty-seven. Okay, she says, Ya, De, Vil, Yai, Yarna, Men, Yai, Yober, Pa, Mornin. Okay, um, so Ya, yes, it's J A, notice they're J's, they're always pronounced Y. Um, and okay, De, D E T. Um, that, well, what's that referred to? Uh, it's referring to the concept of going to a movie next Saturday. Well, that's not, there's not a, it's not a concrete thing. It's an idea of going to the movie. And for such ideas, you got to use the neuter, D-E-T, de. Okay, ya, de, vil, ya, yarna. I will that gladly, yarna. And again, she says, I will go. And same time saying, I want to go. That's why she's using will. Remember, you got the skull, you got the vill, and you got the uh, uh, comertilla, right? And here, you, you're saying, I will go, and saying also, I want to go at the same time, kind of. Yeah, de vil ya yarna. But I have a job, I, but I work. Men ya yober. Pa morning. Okay. Uh, men is but. Yai. I. Yobir. Um, work. Pa. In. Morning. In the morning. It says in the morning. Okay. M O R G E N is the word morning. Okay. Morning. Um, and put an E N on the end of it. It's still. More and because a lot of people skip the middle, they don't pronounce the G or the E. Um, you see here, um, yeah, here they this speaker just said more and, and matter of fact, almost just more, but you can hear a little bit and more. And, um, and there's many ways to pronounce that, and it's gonna it's a regional thing how you pronounce morning or the morning. Okay. Um okay, I guess I'll go over uh this um okay, this is an ET verb. It starts with, I mean, it ends with two consonants and an E. So that would, the guide would say, hey, it's probably going to be E-T, and it is, group one. So J-O-B-B-E, Yalba, um, to work. Yabber um, is I work, or I work, you work, they work, etc. cetera. Yob, go work, do some work, Yob. Man form, yab, uh, yabit, worked, are yabit, has worked, had a yabit, had worked, and again the past participle is the same as the past tense in an et verb. And um and. Just note that uh, yai rhymes with i, j e g yai. Um, I don't call that. I don't call that a silent letter. I look at the e g and think of that as an i, yai. Okay. Um, and also note that vil, although it's usually a modal verb, can also be used by itself, such as right here. Okay. 
can't still means both will and want at the same time, even though it's um, okay, even though it's a modal verb, okay. Um, Okay, uh, also note that in this sentence, the vil is put as the second uh, item in the sentence. Now, it says ya. Yeah. Well, that's yes. That's in comma. The ya yeah doesn't count. Okay. Then it says de vil yai. That will I. Well, wait a second. It's a statement. So why isn't it? Yeah, I will. Why isn't it ya yeah, day that yeah, I will? I will or I want. Well, they have a rule called the V2 rule for verb second. V2, verb second. You In statements, not questions, but in statements, you have to invert the subject and the verb if necessary to make sure the verb is the second item in the sentence. If you had said here, ya, de, ya, I will. Okay, ya doesn't count. De is the first thing you see. That, ya is the second. Vil is the third. Eh, can't do that. Absolutely cannot put the verb anywhere except as the second item. Okay. Um, other Germanic languages have the same rule. It's not unique to Norwegian. Okay. Um, and moving on to sentence six. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Okay, he says, Nar ar du fardi pa yabin. When are you finished uh, at work? Okay, it says at the work. Okay, nar when are are okay they they in this case match English verbally match English and Norwegian here the word are well, it's both a r e in English and e r here but okay so when are you fardy yeah this is f e r it's far fardy the g is silent f e r d i g Paul, uh, at job in the job. Okay. And okay. Next sentence. Yai are fardy clock uh, two. Um, okay, they just they got two o'clock here, but all she says is is two, which is spelled T O. An O is primarily pronounced like a double O. O, like in T O O, two. Okay, so they just spelled it T O. It's pronounced two. And that's the number two. So again, here's a case where it's the same verbally, exactly the same in English as in Norwegian. Okay, so Yai, I, R, M, Fardi. Done. 
clock, it means old clock, and it's it's actually clocka, K L O K K E, trailing E goes up, but they're treating this as a feminine noun, clocka, so it's not a uh, but a uh, clocka, okay. So the clone. So they're actually it's like two of the clones. Okay, I just I usually say say o'clock, but it's really two of the clock, and that's why they got this. They're taking uh, clock of an e, change it to an a for the clock, and two, yai are thirty clock of two. Um. Then we're going to go to 606. Okay. So, Scalvi Mutus, a cafean, clock a tray. Um, and then it continues after that. Let's break down this first half of the sentence. So, Shall we meet at the cafe three at three o'clock? So, um, so shall we? Shall we? Will we? Um, this is a choice they have. So they're using scal, and we're talking about something they they have a choice of doing. Okay. Could they have used? Um, well, okay. So it's saw, so, it can also translate it as then, right? So therefore, so therefore, shall we meet the cafe at three o'clock? Okay, but that is, so is also fine translation here. Okay, scal, shall, the, we, mutus. Okay, this is the passive form. I'll get back to that in a second. Ha at cafe in so cafe is a cafe or restaurant the en on the end the cafe um what's the gender well you should, should know by now that it would be common because there's an en on the end it'd be an et on the end for the the if it was neuter and what would it be for feminine you change the e you change that c to an A. Okay. Um, okay, back to the mutus. Okay, what what does passive mean? Passive means that you are going to um, focus your attention on uh, the subject, excuse me, from the, the object of a sentence and away from the subject, okay? So we meet, uh, we is the subject and the focus in that sentence is on we. What are we going to do? We meet, okay, um, we like cars, all about we, okay. Well, here it's, it's saying that uh, a meeting is going to take place and the V, we, is just a uh, little extra information. Okay, there's going to be a meeting, and oh, we happen to be the ones at that meeting. But the fact that it's going to be a meeting is the number one priority here. Okay, and the the, the V becomes a secondary thing here. And okay, that's the technical technically what it means passive voice. Okay. Um. But more importantly, you need to know that when you see passive voice, it's often that they are making a suggestion. They go to the passive voice to make suggestions. So she, he is suggesting that they meet at the cafe at three o'clock. Okay, and then they go see a movie at four. Is the next part of the sentence. So he's making suggestion. That's why he's going to the uh, passive voice here. Okay, so. All you really need to know, what I just said, was that 
you see that and you think, oh, making a suggestion using passive voice. Passive voice, by the way, you just simply add an S to the uh, uh, infinitive, almost always, just add an S. Okay. Um, let's see here. And I think I covered that good enough. Next sentence. says, uh, say and film Placa Fira. Okay. And I'm proud of myself. I didn't have to look at the number four. I just knew it. <laughs> okay. And see a movie four o'clock. Okay. Um, so, ah, uh, and say, see, and a for common film. Movie, clocka, o'clock, fira, it's F I R E, fira. Okay, and I should rattle my R's a little better. Fira. Okay, um, lazy. Okay. The next sentence. She just says, uka, okay. Okay, so that is at, uh, that was at 611. And I'm going to pause this and set up for the next story. Okay, so we're on to story seven, which starts at seven minutes even. Okay, it says, and man, snacker, may, and utikan sas. So a man speaks. With me and a boutique on site. That means shop clerk. Okay, boutique is a store. On site is a clerk or employee. Okay, um, so boutique happens to be common. On site is also common. It's a compound word, boutique on site. Uh, just like in other German languages, the gender is always going to match the last noun in the compound word. Okay. Um, the D on may, M-E-D, is silent. Um, we just covered the word uh, snock here. Snock in the last story. So we'll move on to the next sentence. I have this scripted so I don't forget to say stuff. Um, trying to give you a little bit of a grammar lecture as I go. Try not to overwhelm you with grammar, but sometimes I will a little bit. But you can always loop this and ignore me most of the time. <laughs> Every once in a while, pay attention to the grammar. Uh, eventually, I know the grammar, I guess. Most of it, you'll you'll learn it by constant use, but Okay, that's your choice so much you pay attention to the grammar. Um, so 704. Vilken uh, Schurta Homerhan Till Ah uh, Schuppa. Okay. Um, this sentence is interesting. It has an SKJ in it and a KJ in it. Okay. SKJ is the harsher SH or what's the normal SH from English. And whereas KJ is a little softer. And the trick is why is it softer? Because the tongue starts with the normal SH in English, which means your tongue is up at your teeth. And you slide your tongue back a little bit so it goes toward back toward your palate. If you feel your tongue at your behind your teeth and slide it back, you'll notice you have a ridge there that 
uh, with your gum with your gums. There's a there's a, like a ridge for your gums, and then from there you go back a little bit. It goes like straight up quite a ways up to the roof of your mouth. So if you slide your tongue back a little bit, you're gonna go from shh to shh. Why did it get softer? Because when the tongue is right up there at the ridge, you got a very tight space. You're squeezing that air through. Shh. But then when you slide your tongue back a little bit, now, now there's a big gap between your tongue and the roof of your mouth. So the airflow doesn't sound so forced. It's going through a wider area, right? Shh. Okay. Trying to demonstrate it. I'm sliding my tongue back and forth. Um, so SKJ is the harsher and the KJ is the softer. Now, do I talking it? Can I get that right? Not yet. I'm still new at learning this. Okay. Vilken Schurta Komerhan Til A Schupa. Okay. Try to do a softer SH for the Schupa. Okay, word by word, Vilken is which for, for common. Shirta, the hard SH, that is a shirt. Um, and I mispronounced that, I see. Okay, it's shorta, sorry, shorta. So they have two words in this language. The word skirt looks more like shirt than shirt does because skirt is shirta. This is shorta, so oh, or shorta. Okay, so I messed up here. Vilken shorta komerhan till a shupa. Okay, which shirt comes he han till to a means nothing, it's just a marker that the infinitive is about to come up. Shupa. Buy. Now, think of the word shop. What are you doing in your shop? Go out and buy stuff, right? I'm going shopping. You're going to go buy stuff. Shupa means to shop. But it's related, right, to, to an English word that sounds like shupa. Okay, next sentence. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm going to stop and conjugate a uh, shupa for you to buy. So it's um, shupir, shupir, uh, present tense. Shup is command form. Shupta is the past tense. It's an E T E on the end, so that makes it group two. Okay. Um, pattern wise, you have uh, uh, Shupa only has the only has the P before the E, so only one constant for the E. And that usually means that's going to be a T E verb. Okay. Um, and you also have to look well. Wait, it's also not a T, a G, or a D. Okay, I remember the word tagged, tagged, T, and then the T G D tagged, T G D tagged. Okay, so if you remember those letters, because so if it's, it's, it doesn't have a T G or D before the E, and there's not a double consonant before the E, then you're probably gonna looking at a T E verb group two. Okay, they're using uh, they're using Comer Tilla here um, in that sentence. By the way, so when you're talking about somebody else, you have no choice what they're going to do. You don't also maybe you don't care what they want to do. So you're using more impersonal impersonal. What are they simply? What are they going to do? 
Okay, Comer to Oak. Um, okay. That's why I have these scripts here. I don't want to miss these grammar points. Moving on. And I have a reminder that people, if they're not hearing the softer versus harder SH by now, probably not doing my ear tune exercises, I'm assigning them, okay? So, hey, go, go to my first video called Norwegian 1, and about the six minute mark, uh, I have like a five minute spiel on how my system goes, including how you do ear tuning exercises and how to do them. I have the ear tuning syllables uh, right there uh, for you. And uh, in the description of my video, I believe, oh, go, go to that first video and, and follow those directions. You should be doing more ear tuning exercises and you should be able to hear that difference between the hard and the soft SH by now. Okay, not do more ear tuning exercises. Uh, now, assuming that you're hearing things well, then it's a good idea to be doing read-throughs. What is that? Okay, uh, we just went over the sentence. You can stop, pause this video, open up the audiobook that I'm teaching you. Again, the 20-minute version of Norwegian listening practice. Um, go to that sentence <clears throat> and read it three times while listening to it. You close your eyes, listen to it three more times. Uh, look over your notes if you have to. Then make sure you understand what the sentence means. And then read it three more times while listening to it. Close your eyes, listen three more times. With your eyes closed, go back and forth. But you don't have to do it again. I mean, you just all together, six times, 12 times you listen to it. All together just now, six times with eyes closed six times while reading it, that's enough. You might think, oh, I gotta do more, I gotta do more. No, no, do more tomorrow, the next day. You keep coming back to this stuff. Never expect that you learn something the first time you look at it. It'd be like studying. I tell people never study. If you do something that seems like studying, you're wasting your time. That's not the way the speech center works. The speech center works by repetition. And, and going back to the same thing over and over again. If you look at it that way, just getting the information to your speech center and letting your speech center do all the heavy work for you, it goes a lot faster. You'll pick all this stuff up in no time. But that said, <laughs> none of it works if you're not doing the ear tuning exercises because if you're not hearing this stuff right, it's you're not going to pick it up that fast. If you're hearing it as a, a kind of a jumbled bunch of words, especially, I tell you to you know listen to this in the background, ignore it most like three, four or five hours a day, have this audiobook playing, ignoring it. If your ear is really good for Norwegian, then that's doing you a lot of good. But if you're hearing a bzz, bzz, bzz in the background, you really can't, it sounds like a bunch of buzzing to you. It's not doing you much good. So it can do you all the good in the world having the passive listening going on if you hear it really well or almost no good at all if you can't hear it well. Key is to do those ear tuning exercises. And the ear tuning exercises, okay, oh, one last sentence. They go along with that passive listening too. Your ear keeps getting better by the passive listening combined with the ear tuning exercises. And no, you can't get very far if all you do is keep listening to a Norwegian without doing the ear tuning exercises. Doing these read-throughs. Listen one sentence over and over and over again. Help a little bit. But the ear tuning exercises will help a hundred times more. Do the ear tuning exercises. Save yourself a massive amount of time. Okay. Back to teaching you this stuff. So we're at sentence three, 707, story seven. Vilken shorta sinus do our best. Now I get this sinus in there. Uh, okay, 
Cinda is think is asking an opinion. The main see an ES here up. Oh, he's asking an opinion. Okay, main thing you gotta know. So Vilken, which Shorta, um, Sinus, do you think do you are is best? Okay, best can mean well, they, they translate it as better, but if you have a bunch of shirts in front of you, it doesn't matter in English if you say which one's better or which one's best. You got a finite number of things in front of you. Um, either word's fine. Okay. Um, you see here on next sentence. Um, okay, I will go over Sinna, uh, Asinna, to think. Um, sinner, it's the present tense. Sin, it's a command. Sinta, past tense. Are sent, had a sent, had thought. Um, and sinus is the um, passive form, okay? And I don't always put the passive form. I put the passive form only if there's passive form used in the sentence at hand. Okay. Um, okay, moving on. So we're at 711. And, uh, says den vita eller den blå the white or the blue den the vita white eller or den the blå blue okay um okay let me see here i have a longer lecture on uh, adjectives later. This comes. There's some adjectives here, right? Bit uh, for white and blah for blue. Um, okay. Got a pronunciation note here. Yeah, the last word here is blah. B L and the A W is an A circle over it. When you have an A circle at the very end of a sentence, you can very hear hear the ah. It's a longer sound, and they got plenty of time to say it. They say is blah. When an A W is in the middle of a word, in the middle of a sentence, you might not hear it as ah. You may hear more like a, a, a short English O, like in the word for. Okay, um, see here. Let's see. I'm going to skip that for now. I got a pronunciation note on a Y. A lot of pronunciation guides say, just think of it as an English short I. Um, but you also see them as like a EU if your lips rounded. Okay. So, ooh, but ooh, ooh. It's something that I and you as English speakers may not hear that well. It's probably why they tell us just to think of it as an eh. Um, and I also study German, and I have similar problems with the corresponding vowel over German as far as um, while you hear it but my understanding is when you say it if you simply round your lips as you're trying to say it it'll sound right to the german speaker or the norwegian speaker okay um okay let me see here let's see, if I, let's see if i any okay i'm gonna pass on doing the um uh, anything about the why is there an E on Vita here? The, the word is white, 
vit it has an e on it okay and just note that for now do a lecture later okay vel yai sinus then blah our bra well i think the blue one is good Vel, well, yai, I, sinus, think, using, passive, giving an opinion. Den, the, blah, wu, r, is, bra. Good. Tell you right now, as far as adjectives go, bra is invariable. It never changes. It never has an e to it. Sometimes you have to add, add a T, not, not for bra. Nothing gets added to bra. It is invariable, stays bra all the time. Okay. Next. That was uh, 7 minutes and 13 seconds. And sentence 6 coming up is at 7 minutes and 16 seconds. Then passer bra may... Then bra, yak, and d. It goes well with your gray jacket. Okay. The verb they're using here is suits. Passer. Ah, passer, to suit. Uh, conjugate that for you. Ah, uh, passer, to suit. Passer. Pass. Pass it. Har pass it. Hada pass it. Okay. Uh, that's group one. Um, has double S before the E in PASA. So it fits the guide. Uh, two consonants and an E goes to ET for the ending for the past tense. K and uh, I mean suits or fits. Um, so it then is referring to the uh, shirt from the previous sentence and shirts are common noun so you use den you'd use de det -E if you're referring to a neuter noun from the previous sentence and by the way although you don't hardly see it in this first 20 stories if you're going to refer to something later on in the sentence not the previous sentence but later on in the same sentence you're always going to use de det -E okay um, okay, so it says, den passer bra, that suits well may with den the gra gray yaka jacket d your. You're, you're treating a uh, jacket as feminine here. You can treat it as uh, common if you want. The word is actually jaka with j-a-k-k-e -E, jaka okay this word here is jaka the ah jaka um and then they got the d which match for your matches feminine so it's d feminine dean for common dit for neuter dina for all plurals doesn't matter about gender for plural it's dina okay um next sentence okay it says sinus do de you think that pretty quick you think again talk about opinions here that's your opinion okay so he's really kind of saying that is your opinion that you think that because it's passive voice uh, next sentence. Seven twenty one. Men then passer ica saw bra may de ruda, excuse me, that's rua, uh, slips it mit. Um, had slips of mit. I'm trying to go through this kind of fast. 
Uh, okay. Try that again. Men, but, den, it, pasir, suits, ica, not, so bra, so good, may, with, de, the, ru, uh, that's the D there, but it's silent, so it goes ru, uh, R, O cross, D, E, ru, uh, red, uh, lips, uh, mit, um, T doesn't get pronounced when you're adding the ET to slips. Slips is the tie. This is the tie. Kind of. Now, you don't, there's no the there, but you have to have the ET for the grammar. This is mit, my. That's the my for neuter, mit. Okay. Um, so. Um, just to note, so R O cross D is r red. When you add the E, you still don't pronounce that D. It just goes to R uh, A. Uh. Um, okay. Sentence nine at seven twenty four. Okay, and he says, he tacks on, does it? Your Denvel? Well, does it? Vel means well, but he puts the well at the very end. I would say, well, does it? Or I could say, does it? Well, uh, okay. He says, your, he says, your, does, den, it, thou, well. Okay. And that word does comes from to do, ah, jura, ah, jura, sorry, ah, jura. Um, GJ is still a Y sound. Um, ah, jura, to do. Uh, your is the uh, present. Notice this, this is irregular because uh, you're, you're dropping an E. Normally, you add an R to go to your present tense. Here, you're dropping an E because it, your uh, as, as, ends of R E. You drop the E to get to your R. But you still have an R at the end of the present tense form. <laughs> and that's almost a rule that you're going to have an R. There's one verb to know. Uh, that's they, V E T, they, uh, where, where the present tense doesn't end with an R. So whether it's irregular or regular, except for one verb, uh, there, are other, there are other exceptions. The modal verbs sometimes don't end with an R, like scowl doesn't end with an R in the present tense, for instance. But besides the modal verbs, all your verbs, other than for to know, uh, end up having an R to end the present tense form. Okay, uh, let's finish the conjugation, you're a, a you're a to do. Your present tense, your also for command, yorda goes to from O cross to just O, yorda for past tense, so that's irregular. Our yort has done, ada yort, had done. Okay, next sentence. She just says vel, and after that, ya, ya, ar. Any. Okay, yes, I am in agreement. Any means in agreement. You can think of it as from other German languages, kind of like the word one matches the word one. Well, I am one with you, right? But again, in this language, any just means E N I G, G is silent, means in agreement. I am in agreement. Okay, next sentence. And this is the last sentence here. Um, so he says, Uka, okay. Sa yai tar den vita e steda for den blah. Okay. Okay. So, sa yai, I, tar, take. Um, 
den the vita white e in stada um stay s t e d equals um place in or okay so in place of right e in the place of e stada for for he means of for f o r usually means uh, either for f o r or to t o o as in too much, but it can also mean of such as here. And the phrase e stada for that state is s t e d e d means instead of instead of the blue then blah. Okay, and I go to I go over the conjugation of uh, to take ta. Okay, this is a irregular verb. Ah, uh, ta to take. R, that's pretty regular. Add an R, but then it goes to talk. T O K talk. Um, and I could be mispronouncing that. I didn't check that. It could be took because it's T O K. You think it'd be took? Yeah. Okay. I did not, did not check the pronunciation on T O K. So maybe it's talk, maybe it's took. Okay. Our tot, T A T T. So it has taken and had a tot, had taken. Okay. And I'm going to end the video there. Hit the like button if you like this kind of thing. Tell people about it. If you think it's uh, worthwhile for them. And uh, hey, think about subscribing if you like languages in general. I teach, uh, I'm up to teaching like 19 of them right now. Explore my, my channel page. Some people don't know this. All you got to do is, my logo is like an A, a red. I can't, it was like a red A. I don't know. I don't, I don't have that in front of me. But uh, the, you hit my logo, the, the, the circle with the A on it, and that takes you to my channel page. And hit videos and it got a couple hundred videos show up various languages take a look around uh, see if we might find something useful for you um, everybody have a good day bye bye